Uh, good evening, my YouTube viewers. Crystal here. Um, I just wanted to make another video for you. Um, this video is going to be on the Titanic data set with the Kaggle competition. And you can see that what I've done is I've been doing a little bit of um, experimenting. And I decided that what I wanted to do is I wanted to experiment with this function in sklearn called column transformer. Apparently it's a new function. Um, basically with sklearn they want you to keep your test set and your training set completely separate. And in addition to that, um, they want to make sure that there's not very much noise in your system because if you have a lot of noise in the system then that's going to affect your accuracy and it's going to affect your error scores so you can see here i've got three column transformers so the first column transformer i did i got a 77033 and that was uh with the bagging classifier and i thought well let's try ada uh, regret ADA boost reg classifier and see if my score improves. Well, my score didn't improve. It, it decreased by three points. So I didn't want to do that. So I went back and put in the bagging classifier again. It, everything was the same. And I got a 76315 when I put the bagging classifier back in again. And the problem is that you know, you just never know what you're going to get. But since I got my highest score on 77033, I'm going to go ahead and use that um, data set. I'm going to use that data set, that program, because I got my highest score doing that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the... Uh, web address the url onto the description box down below so if you want to click onto the file and follow along with me you are more than welcome to do it and it says here that i'm sharing so i'm sharing this file so you can should be able to follow along with me no problem there's a note that says view the latest version but I don't want to view the latest version because those three attempts were exactly the same and this was the highest score I got. So it's the one I wanted to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the uh, Kaggle Titanic competition and I'm going to read you your problem statement. So the problem statement is the sinking of the Titanic is one of the most infamous shipwrecks in history. On April 15, 1912, during her maiden voyage, the widely considered unsinkable RMS Titanic sank after colliding with an iceberg. Unfortunately, there weren't enough lifeboats for everyone on board, resulting in the death of 1,502 out of 2,224 passengers and crew. While there was some element of luck involved in surviving, it seems some groups of people were more likely to survive than others. In this challenge, we ask you to build a predictive model that answers the question, what sorts of people were more likely to survive using passenger data, i.e. name, age, gender, socioeconomic class, etc. So that's your problem statement with this Kaggle Titanic competition. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to load the libraries that we feel that we're going to be using to solve this problem. So we imported pandas, numpy, matplotlib, uh, and um, seaborn. The next thing we're going to do is because I'm actually using the Kaggle's Jupyter Notebook, we're going to import the operating system and we're going to read the files that are actually in the Kaggle directory. And now what we're going to do is we're going to read the files in the Kaggle directory. We're going to read the train file and we're going to read the test file. 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check the files for any null values. So we use train.isNull.sum sum and test.isNull.sum. So you can see in the train file age, cabin, and bar we have null values and in the test file age, cabin, um, and fare we have null values. So what I decided to do here is I decided one to create an ID train and ID test variables and put the data from train passenger ID and test passenger ID in those variables because well one of those variables anyway is going to be needed at the end of the program. So that's why I had to do that. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop some columns that we don't need. So we're going to drop the passenger ID, the cabin, and the ticket columns on both the train and the test file. Now what we're going to do is we've got a graphical representation of the people that survived and the people that didn't survive. So more people didn't survive than survived, and you can see that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to process the data. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new column called title. And this new column is going to be taken from uh, the column called name. And we're going to use an internally generated function and split the the column and the full stop. And in between the column and the full stop, we're going to take that data and that is going to actually be their title. And you can see we checked all their titles. There are 17 titles, Captain, Colonel, Don, Doctor, John, Keir, Lady, Major, Master, Miss, Mademoiselle, Madame, Mr., Mrs., Ms., Rev., Sir, and the Countess. And there was also another one called Donna that for some reason it wasn't in there, but I found it quite by accident. And the reason why is because um, it, it just won't come out correctly if you don't have Donna. But I think probably the comma and the full stop weren't in the right place and that's why they missed it out. And then what we did was we uh, created a dictionary called Title One, and we assigned a numeric value to all of these titles and we mapped the title in the train set and the test set. And so now you can see these titles have been encoded. The next thing we did is we've created a column called family and we created this column called family by adding train sib sp to train parch and test sib sp to test parch. So we've got this new column called family. So now you can see how many people we have in each family because SIB, SP, and PARCH relate to the family. And so we graphically represented that so you can see that zero was the highest. And that means that people who were driving, traveling on their own were uh, the highest number of people. Next thing we do is we check our fare, and we didn't have to, we probably could have deleted the fare, but anyway, it's in there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to identify numerical and categorical features and pre-process the data. And the reason why is because we are um, experimenting on column transformer because I wanted to see if if I use column transformer if it would increase my accuracy because that's what it's all about is increasing the accuracy so when you're using column transformer you are keeping your train file and your test file separate and in addition to that if you keep the 
train file and the test file separate, it's also supposed to reduce noise. And when you have really noisy data, then there's more um, room for error. So that's what this was all about, using Column Transformer to try to improve my score. So the numeric features are age, fair, and family. Numeric transformer equals pipeline and steps are imputer that's a simple imputer strategy equals median and scalar that's your standard scalar now we check our categorical features which are embarked sex p class and title so our categorical transformer equals pipeline, steps equals imputer, simple imputer, strategy equals constant, fill value equals missing. And one hot, one hot encoder, handle unknown equals ignore. So basically what we're doing is we're scaling the numeric columns and we're one hot encoding the uh, categorical columns. And now we have our preprocessor equals column transformer, transformers equals num, numeric transformer, numeric features, and cat, categorical transformer, categorical features. And then when we've done all that, we have a heat map of the um, different columns in this data set and how the different columns in the data set uh, relate to each other. Now what we want to do is we want to set up our X and Y values. So Y equals train.survived and X equals train.drop name sib sp parch and survived axis equals one and x test equals test dot drop name sib sp parch axis equal one so now you can see why you can see why is just a bunch of ones and zeros and you can see x and x is a data frame that we're going to be using which has p class sex age fair and bart title family and x test is exactly the same format p class sex age fair and bart title family and the reason why is x test has to be the same format as x because um you're going to test on x tests make predictions on x test so now what we're going to do is we're going to split our training file up for training and validation. So X train, X val, Y train, Y val equals train test split. X, Y test size equals 10%. Random state equals 1. Stratify equals yes. Shuffle equals 2. And then in addition to that, we check the shapes of our data frames. So now what we've done is we've counted the values in the validation set. So that's just a little bit of extra information. And we've, um, we've graphically represented YVAL, which is our validation set that we just split up. And we checked for class weights, but in the end I didn't use class weights because um, I tested the model with class weights and I tested the model without class weights and I believe that I had a higher accuracy without class weights on my validation set so I didn't use it anymore but there's the formula for you if you would like to, to use it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select our model. So model equals pipeline, steps equals preprocessor, preprocessor, classifier, which is bagging classifier, base estimator, random forest classifier, in estimators equals 100, random state equals 1, class weight equals class weights, fit x train y train model dot score x train y train so i think i did end up using class weights because i tested it with class weights and i tested it with balanced to see 
which one was going to give me the best accuracy because that's what I want to do. I want to get the highest accuracy I can. So on the X train, Y train, I had an accuracy of 94.38%. Now I'm doing my tests on my validation set. YPRAD equals model dot predict XVAL. And we want to predict print the model score XVAL Y scale. And I got a 0.8. That was the highest I'd ever gotten. And I was just absolutely so pleased. And I thought, well, if I've got a 0.8, if this is the highest I've ever gotten, then surely when I test on the test set, it's going to be higher. Uh, that's what I thought. So we're going to count on our y pred, and you can see how many zeros and how many ones we have. And what I did was I made a little data frame so you can compare your actual values against your predicted values. So now what I've done is I've predicted on my test set, predictions equals model dot predict x test. And now what I've done is I've made a data frame. So the data frame that I've made is passenger ID is ID test, which I declared where I defined at the very beginning of the program and survived is predictions. And then we output that to a CSV file. And we've got a little message saying your submission was successfully saved. So now what we're going to do is we're going to submit our predictions. And um, so my submission equals PD read CSV, my submission. So you can see the submission right there. And so the, that's our predictions. And then so what we've done is you've got my submission. And if I wanted to submit it, I could, but I don't want to waste a perfectly good submission. And the reason why is because with Kaggle, I only get 10 submissions a day. So I don't want to waste a submission if I don't have to, because I've already submitted on this and I got a 77.033 percentile, which is not as high as I would have liked for it to have been. But what, what I'll do is I'll take you back so you can see that seven, it was um, 77033. That was less than Cat Boost. So Cat Boost was pretty good. And you can see through my submissions, you know, I'm trying really hard to get the accuracy up, but I don't think that the accuracy is going to improve. I think I need to do some, learn some more programming and see if I can increase the accuracy with other programming. I've not been able to increase the accuracy above a 78. So I definitely need to do some work and learn some, learn some more programming skills to increase my accuracy. So this concludes my presentation on what I've done with column transformers. And you can see that using column transformers did not increase my accuracy like I was hoping it would. But I guess it's a more methodical way to do things. But, you know, you never know. Um, so this concludes my presentation. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. If you like the work I do and you would like to make a donation, I will leave my PayPal account and email address in the description box down below. And thank you so much for watching this video. And I look forward to making other videos for you.